again, Kendrick said it, and you know he don't. It's like he snuffed Drake. He mm-hmm. he swung one and no one was expecting it. And when in boxing, if you don't see a punch coming, pause. That's what will knock you out. What's up, everybody? So in October last year, Drake released his eighth album titled For All the Dogs, which featured a collaboration with J. Cole called First Person Shooter. In one verse, Cole suggested that he, Drake, and Kendrick Lamar were the big three of the current era of hip-hop. To quote his exact lyrics, he rapped, love when they argue who the hardest MC, is it K-Dot, is it Aubrey, or me, with the big three like we started a league. The song debuted at the top of the US singles chart, becoming Drake's 13th and Cole's first number one song. The achievement meant Drake tied with Michael Jackson for the most number one singles by a male solo artist. Then a week later, Taylor Swift's Cruel Summer replaced them at number one, and the moment seemed to have passed, but privately, Kendrick Lamar had taken note and wasn't happy. So earlier this month, producer Metro Booming and rapper Future released a collab album called We Don't Trust You, and hidden in the track listing was an uncredited verse by Kendrick Lamar, and it was explosive. With a dope delivery, he took aim at Cole's verse, claiming there was no big three, it's just big me. What would you rate there? What, what's your thoughts on that? Well, again, hip-hop is a sport, real hip-hop. So as a fan, it's not a personal thing, mm-hmm. but I am, um, I could say this, uh, again, Kendrick said it and you know, he don't, it's like he snuffed Drake. He, mm-hmm. he swung one and no one was expecting it. And when in boxing, if you don't see a punch coming, pause, that's what will knock you out. But if you can see the punch and brace your face, it doesn't hurt as much. Kind of brace the lead, yeah. So now that he started this war, and I got to give him props for, because people been battling, but it hasn't been battling in uh, lyrics. It's been battling like whatever you do in the street, mm-hmm. then you talk about what you did in the street. Yeah. But this is a battle of lyrics and, you know, who could be eloquent about, you know, conveying a point. Yeah. So in this moment, there's no surprises, you know, like Chris Brown jumped in the comments, you know, at, battle somebody, Quavo's battling. And that's interesting to see. Again, as long as they keep it on uh on put on West, on vinyl. And Kanye jumped into the equation. So at this point, a battle record, someone dissing somebody, is not gonna be there's no surprise. Mm-hmm. So now you have to hit a little harder. And you know, I'm not sure if that first um track was AI or not that we heard from Kendrick Lamar. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But number one, I thought the AI shit makes it whack because now you never know who's real and you got to get validation. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to be like certified real record to know it's not um, AI. And uh, number two, it's not surprising anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? So I was curious to see how Kendrick was going to approach a response and when I first, like when you want to hear like a battle rap record, you want to hear it. It's almost like, for me, it's usually like you want it aggressive. Mm-hmm. And when you started out with, I thought was cool because it was an intro. But when I first heard it, I didn't like it. Like when I first was listening to it, but then when I started hearing the words of what he was doing, mm-hmm. I was like, nah, this shit is kind of ill. Mm-hmm. And then the next part, um, when he talked about being a father as a man, I thought that that was the most um, logical grown man battle rap shit that you could say because I'm on that type of time. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, like maybe a killer might want to hear about killing. A father really enjoys hearing about how fly it is to be a dad. And that's basically the message I've been conveying. Like, yo, fuck all that dumb shit. If you ain't a dad, it don't matter. Yeah. So I thought, and you know, he talked about the way he dressed. He talked the way he was like, yo, you can't say Nick. Like, I, I thought that he gave him a little ether there that a lot of that, because it could be some truth to it, could hurt. And for me, in battle rap, I like the thing about the Nas rap with Jay is it didn't bother me because he was making shit up. There was no truth really to what he said. Mm. And so to me, I was like, that's even though it was cool and it sounded dope, because what we were saying was true. So when we battle, it's like, yo, you got to be talking about the truth. Anybody can make anything up. So for me, just because you say some bullshit or if you say you get money and you're not or you killed the nigga and you didn't 
or you're going to do, that's not to me real. Or if you make up something and lie on somebody. So what he did was make me, number one, question if what Drake was saying was true. Number two, you know, now he's going to be insecure about the way he dresses. Number three, you know, he did address that for some people. It might be problematic for them or triggering to hear um, someone that's Jewish saying nigga. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And, and so I thought that it was a very strategic, eloquent, lyrical play. And because he spoke about the fatherhood, I'm giving him thumbs up and he's in the lead. So now I've heard people don't like certain things about it because they may want to hear some more, you know, shoot them up, bang, bang. But I'm like, nah, that's really, to me, the most important thing is you're being a good dad. And what I heard was him making being a good dad cool. So I thought what he said was good for, um, for the trajectory of making it cool to be a dad and uncool not to be a dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and that's that. So I'm giving him his props on that one. 